Was he Washington? So it was, um, so it was one of those things and stuff that we did and it was, she, you know, sent over some um, secret ingredients. Jerry had to make them up and had to get them off to the side. So it is on Chef AJ's channel. I think, do we have it, do we have a copy too on, on YouTube? Sure. Yeah, so on our YouTube, there should be a, a copy of that too. It was really fun. We actually had, I was trying to, sorry for the dog barking. We had millet. We had his Well Your World spices, so a couple of his spices that he, because he sells spices and some other sauces. And then we had, what do we have? Mushrooms, portobello mushrooms, and there was something else. Oh, zucchini. And so those are the things that we had that was hidden. So she didn't, you know, she doesn't do anything that's crazy and, and that type of thing. So we did that and I ended up making, so he ended up making like a portobello pizza and I think a wrap. And then I ended up making um, a meatloaf. So I did the meatloaf really quick because it's, you know, you can use pretty much any ingredient you want. So it was these little round meatloaf, had uh, sauteed spinach on the bottom. And then I did like a, just a regular gravy and then mashed potatoes on top and just poured the gravy over and stuff. And it was really pretty. So, but a lot of fun. We did it in about 45 minutes um, between the two of us. And both of us, there's no win or lose, which was really nice. That's the way Chef AJ does it. But a lot of you watch her channel, um, her, like I think it's like YouTube Chef AJ, um, she's got all these like different chefs that went up against each other and stuff. And it's really fun there. She made it really fun and interesting and, and made sure that, you know, everybody gets to learn and all that type of stuff. So that was fun. So let's see. Let's see. We got a question. Oh, I saw it. it you were awesome. Thank you. <laughs> it was one of those ones you don't know what to expect. Um, and then, then I, I noticed it was like, there was a lot of talking and things like that. So it was kind of hard to get a and, you know, kind of a word in and stuff, but yeah, make it up and have it work turned out really pretty. I was, I was uh, very pleased at it. Um, let's see. So I was looking at the recipe for the salad dressing. What substitutes would you make for balsamic vinegar? Um, so, so if you don't use balsamic vinegar, you could use, so no vinegars is kind of what I'm wondering. Yeah, Marilyn knows that. Are you talking no vinegars or are you talking she just... Knows. Let me know about the vinegar stuff and then I can kind of give you a couple other things maybe to look at. You could do, I mean, some of the things you could look at on the dressing is if you don't do the balsamic vinegar, you just use like the Dijon mustard. So you do more of a mustard dressing, which is really good. I didn't, the reason I was asking about vinegars, balsamic, if you don't like balsamic, you could do a red wine vinegar. Um, that's in a lot of dressings that I make too, which is, which is really fun. Um, you could also do like coconut aminos. So that's another one that you could substitute for the balsamic vinegar. It'll be a little sweeter. And then you just add a little bit more Dijon, but there's like many different things like that that you could substitute for that. All right, so we've got, so two things to make. So we've got the creamy Tuscan. So we're gonna, so if you're following along with the recipe, one of the things we've got is I have the spaghetti squash. Let me just grab my hot pads. I already, I already baked it because I figured you probably didn't want to watch for like 40 minutes while it was baking in the oven. So I just took spaghetti squash like this. And then I just, you know, so that, so basically it comes together. It's cool. It's pretty cool. So it came together like this and I just sliced it lengthwise. If you don't want to do that, you know, be careful when you're slicing it because you've got the stem here and it's really hard to, to get your knife through it. So if you don't want to do that, you could actually do it, you know, just cross it like halfways if you wanted to do that. Then what you want to do is you want to take the seeds and the kind of the extra pulp that's right here in the middle, because that's the, the stuff that just needs to go in the trash. And then this is all going to be the spaghetti squash that I'm going to scrape out after it cools off just a little bit. So I just put it in the oven. I put it on parchment paper and then I put either you can put water or vegetable broth, whichever you want to do. And I just kept it, made sure it was wet. It's been sitting in the oven for a little bit, but it's still warm. And then I baked it at 350. You can bake it at 400 if you want to go faster. And then I just kind of just let it just, you know, simmer and make sure there was enough water. And you can see here now it's just really soft, but it's not mushy, which is really nice. So that's what, those are ready to go. And spaghetti squash, you know, it's, it's coming up to the fall, which is really sad. I mean, I was noticing the other day we were out walking the dogs. There's like leaves, dried leaves that are starting to go along the sidewalk. So weather's turning here in Colorado really fast, which it didn't seem like we even really had a summer much. It just seemed to go so fast. But yeah, so this is all ready to go. And spaghetti squash, you can get it pretty much anywhere. But just keep the moisture on it. And it's, it's basically going to roast, but it's also going to steam. And then the way that you can tell that it's done is when you touch it in the oven, if it gives like that, so it just kind of gives a kind of a nice mush. That means you've got your spaghetti squash is ready to go. And then, especially for this recipe, you can just pull it out and then we'll scrape it down and stuff. But you could for a really fun one because we did, um, what did we do? It was like spaghetti, oh, it was a spaghetti squash lasagna bowls. 
probably about a month or two ago. And we actually scraped out the spaghetti squash, made the, the ingredients like a, almost like a lasagna, had a ricotta and everything. But then we used, we put it back in the, in the actual spaghetti squash and then put it back and put it in the oven and stuff. And then you could actually eat it right out of the bowl, which was really nice. So you could do the same recipe with this recipe, but we're actually not gonna do it with this one. So I'm gonna let this cool a little bit so I can handle it a little bit better. <clears throat> All right, so to get the sauce going, so you've got non-dairy milk. So you could use, you know, hemp milk, oat milk, soy milk. We usually use soy milk here. Um, we just, we're just used to it and we have, it's a non-sweetened. And I would highly recommend don't get vanilla. Make sure you get like a non-sweetened type of a milk. Um, you could do like the almond milk, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to put that here in the, or in the, in the saucepan. If it starts to get a little dry, just add a little bit more non-dairy milk. That's fine. So just kind of play with it a little bit. Um, I also, I soaked my sun-dried tomatoes. So I'm going to show you that. So I just, what I did is last night, I just put them in water. So it could be warm water, cold water, and then um, just let them soak. And then now they have these really nice, soft, sun-dried tomatoes. But I also kept the water. And the reason why is when, if things start getting a little bit like dry, anything on here, then I'm going to use the sun-dried tomato water. And it's just almost like a, like a, using a vegetable broth. But why, you know, why look, I always say, why waste it? Because this is really good liquid. So one thing I also did with the sun-dried tomatoes, there's basically, there's many different kinds, but the ones, you know, you can get regular, just like sun-dried tomatoes like this, they're just regular flavor. Or one of the things I really prefer is smoked. So I'm using the smoked ones today because I thought with the, with the, um, the Tuscan spaghetti squash, a little bit of smoked flavor and stuff would be really good. These, the smoked one are so good if you're making like a quesadilla and you have like a hummus or, or um, something like that with it. When you soak these and put it in there and mix it up with, with all your other ingredients, the smoked, delicious. One of my favorites. But I wanted to show you, you can get definitely, you know, they're, they're right around um, like where you have like the, the made up garlic and where all the tomatoes and stuff are. You'll see them in pretty much all of your stores. If you can't find smoked in your stores, you can find them on Amazon. You can get, uh, you get packets there. All right. So we we'll let that go up a little bit because it's not going to take long to make the sauce because it's, you know, it's, we're just mixing up the milk products. So I'm going to grab the salad so we get that ready. I love it when you get all the ingredients all made up like this and chopped. This would be, like I said, this would be nice to come home to every day, even for me, just to have everything mixed up and you're like, okay, we'll take some of this and this and make your big salad and it's all delicious. So let me grab the bowl. All right, so we have the kale. So just that, so I'm gonna actually make the um, dressing first. And so, like I said, you could use, you could use like coconut aminos, you could use Bragg's um, aminos, you could do to substitute with your balsamic vinegar. You may have to play a little bit with maybe a little bit of your agave or date paste or a little bit of Dijon mustard just to get kind of where you, what to, you know, the taste that you like. But that's the way and stuff to, to get around the balsamic vinegar or red wine vinegar. Be a little more tart, but it'll still be good. So I've got two tablespoons of the balsamic vinegar because I want to get everything stirred up. So I have agave because I didn't have any date paste. So date paste, the way I make that is I just get regular dates, make sure you take the pits out. And then I just soak them just like I was doing with the sun-dried tomatoes. I just soak them in water. And then I take the water and the, the actual dates and I put them in the, like a high-speed blender. And then I just, I just mesh them all up. So, and blend them all up. And then you get them all nice and smooth. Keep it in a mason jar for usually about, so I've had it for about three to four weeks. Um, what you do when you put the mason jar lid on it, put the plastic, like a plastic wrap on it, and then put your lid on it because otherwise your, your lid, a lot of them are metal, will actually start oxidizing. And then it makes sure your ingredients inside of that go bad a lot faster. So put your plastic wrap, put your um, lid on. And it, like I said, it kept for about three and a half to four weeks in the refrigerator. And then all of a sudden it kind of has got a little bit of, um, you know, like when fruit starts ripening a little bit, that's kind of what it smelled like. So that's when I, when I uh, sent it on its way and uh, had to make some new. But you also, if you make up a whole bunch of the date paste, you can freeze it. So that's another way, but don't freeze it. Don't freeze it like big bags of it. Freeze it in like little small, like sandwich bags um, type of thing. And then that way you can just grab out a bag as you want it. And then you could you know, let it fall out, put it in your mason jar or some kind of a glass jar like this with a nice lid. 
And then you have date paste around all the time, which is really nice. I ran out of dates, didn't have time to go to the store. So that's why I don't have the date paste. All right, so I've got agave. I get it all out. And if you don't want agave, you don't want the sweetness and stuff, you could just leave it out. You don't have to worry about that. You could also use, if you wanted to, um, like that monk fruit sweetener and some of those other sweeteners that are out there. You could substitute, play with it. It wouldn't be a one-to-one. -one. I would start, so this is a one tablespoon of agave. I would say probably start with maybe like an eighth of a teaspoon of like the monk fruit sweetener. And then mix it and taste it and then keep adding more to it. So we always talk about in the classes, you know, when you're doing spices and things, even with my recipes, I always recommend go low. So if it says a tablespoon, start with like a, you know, a quarter of a teaspoon and then keep adding to your, your spices because you can always add, but you can't take away. So if you put in like, I don't know, like a, um, a tablespoon of the Dijon mustard, if I said to do that and you didn't like it, it was like too, almost like too tart, too sour, then you would throw it away and I don't want you to do that. So start small. All right, so I'm gonna put in a half a tablespoon of the Dijon. You could also, if you're not a Dijon fan, um, you can substitute it with like a, like a brown mustard, you know, a ground mustard or like still ground mustard. You could do like a yellow, just a regular yellow, um, what is it called? Like Hotchman's mustards, anything like that. You could also substitute in and do like say, a quarter teaspoon of Dijon, add a little bit of stone ground mustard, a quarter teaspoon, a little bit of the yellow mustard, and mix it in that way, and you just get this really nice mustard dressing. And those are one of my favorites. Anything that's a mustard dressing, I love. All right, let's get that. So then we've got the garlic. Mix that in. So just minced garlic. And then a little bit of salt and black pepper. So I'm, we're staying away from the salt, except for, you know, if it's on the table, need it. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of, of black pepper. And then you can either put it in a blender or mason jars, you know, whatever you would want to do. I, since I'm going to be using it, I just brought out a jar and a whisk. So I figured I'd just get that going. If you don't want your garlic to be like little, because you've got the little minced chunks, that's when you can put it in the blender and, and blend it smooth if you want to do that. So if you want this dressing thicker, another way would be to put like a teaspoon of um, flax seeds. So minced, uh, not minced, but um, my choice like ground flax seeds and then if you blend it up in a blender with the ground flax seeds then it gets it really thick that's really nice so i make a i make a dressing all the time that has the ground flax seeds in it so you can actually see how thick it is which is really nice and we keep it in like these big jars because you we eat it a lot this is on goes on everything so even though jerry will sometimes do like balsamic just regular balsamic vinegar he will put some of this on there just for a little bit of the different flavor so we always keep big jars of the, the balsamic we call that the one i just showed you is the, the crack dressing um it's because some of a friend of ours said he used to eat only blue cheese dressing and then tried this and said oh my gosh this is my favorite dressing and it's like crack and so she eats it all the time all right so that's mixed up so it's just a nice you know just kind of like a nice color of a brown dressing and it's got a little bit of flavor. So one of the things that you always want to do is taste it. Make sure you've got the right flavors before you dump it on the salad. So you want the dressing taste. You've got a little bit of that tartness of the vinegar. And then you've got a little bit of the Dijon, which is really good. And then you have a little bit of the kind of the sweetness with it. And the mixture of all that is just really good. So taste it. Try it a little bit. You may you may find you want more Dijon, more, you know, more balsamic or anything like that. So feel free to make it your own recipe. So I'll just put that off to the side, let that set and make sure everything's all mixed up. Over this way. All right, so then, so for how long we're gonna add the ingredients. So we've got the, the kale. So I did, you know, you may, it's the Tuscan kale, um, which is really the long leaves of the kale, but you can also, you can also use just the regular curly if you can't find it in the stores or they sometimes call it elephant ear kale, but it's a really nice, it's a, it's a lot, um, I guess not as, as, as like um, chewy as the regular kale that you see that the curly leaf. And so I like it a lot. So if you can find it, you know, especially like I said, COVID is sometimes you get products that you can find and sometimes you can't, um, but we found, Jerry found this in the store the other day. So this was really good. So we're going to use the real true Tuscan kale. So all I did was I just, I just take the leaves, I strip them off the stalks, and then I just chop them up. So you got just these, you know, nice, 
nice chops of it. If you end up with a you know a couple big pieces in there, just grab your hands in there. Get that, and it's just really a pretty kale because it's really it's always just this beautiful dark green. You never see the other colors like the lighter greens that you do see on like the curly kales, like that. So that bunch there is like one bunch of the Tuscan kale chopped up. You can also, as a tip, you can also um, freeze kale. So if you end up with, you know, like, so say you get two bunches or you're growing a whole bunch of this in your garden, which I know a lot of people grow kale, you can always strip it off the stalks and then just put it in baggies and then, and then put it in the freezer. And then when you're getting ready to use it, like in soups and, and like, you know, different like Italian dishes, et cetera, you just take the baggie and you just crunch it up. And then you can pour it into any of your soups and things. And you can have this, you know, this, this great, I guess, kale and stuff, you know, to be able to put in there. And especially if you've got kids that they're like, oh, I don't like kale. They'll think if you crunch it up after it's frozen, it looks like a person, which is really nice. So we used to do that a lot with uh, Jerry's mom, that she had a lot of things that she didn't like. And, and kale was one of them, onions was one of them. So I would, I would actually say, oh, I can't eat those. But when I mixed them into the, the uh, actual dishes, you know, testing them out and everything like that, it was more of a dislike, but didn't, but if you couldn't see that it was actually like big strips of kale like this, loved it. It was all kinds of recipes. So we actually got a lot of really good ingredients inside of her, which was really good. All right. So we've got red cabbage. So um, you can shred it. I just did it kind of like nice little, kind of like a little, um, little strips of it, little chiffonade strips. So I'm going to put the red cabbage in. And if you get bigger pieces, you can just, you know, just chop them up. And then mix them up. The red cabbage with the green is so pretty. And one thing I have to watch in the house, whenever I'm cutting up uh, cabbage, there's always somebody lurking, lurking behind me by the name of Jerry. And he's usually what he's doing is, is grabbing all the pieces out. I got a couple big pieces in there, which I'll hand over to him. He loves to just eat the kale. Or not kale, but the red cabbage. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Thank you. There you go. So now he's going to snack behind the camera. Isn't that pretty already? Just without even adding anything else to it, you've got these beautiful colors. All right. And then we've got great tomatoes. So just chop them up in half. You could dice them up more if you want to, but I thought just because they're half, they're just pretty. So, and you can see them a lot better. So I just did the halves. And a lot of times too, which is really nice, is that when you do only the halves of the tomatoes, then what ends up happening too is, is your salad doesn't break down as fast because when you dice them up, you're getting all the interior of the tomatoes and it gets into your salads and stuff and it will break down a lot faster. So an easier way to keep your salads a lot fresher and not have the, the tomatoes break them down is just to them in half. So got that. All right. So let me just get this out of the way. It's all ready. Beautiful. Red, purple, green. Beautiful salad. Then we've got chickpeas. So just regular canned, no salt chickpeas, rinse and drain. Mix those in. And then we're going to set that to the side. And we're going to let that set for a little bit. Just so pretty. And if you don't like chickpeas, then you could add like cannellini white beans. You could add you know, you could add black beans. I mean, anything that you want to add that's different. You could have, you could add um, like water chestnuts. Do little pieces of that. You could do jicama. So there's all kinds of things that you can add if you don't like your don't like chickpeas, or you can just leave them out. So I like chickpeas and salad. I would say that Jerry used to not like them way back when and stuff, but now now loves them a lot. So. All right, so we'll put this over here so we can just get that ready. So we'll do that at the very end. I don't want the dressing on yet. I want to make sure everything else is ready for for this. So. Grab spaghetti squash in a bowl. Grab your favorite fork. And then what you do with the spaghetti squash is you just run your fork on the inside like that. So when you do that, it comes up with these really nice pieces of spaghetti squash. Sometimes you'll get really long pieces depending on the spaghetti squash, and other times it'll be more small, like what we're doing here. So just dump it out as you're going. If you get a big piece, like a chunk, because your fork didn't get to, um, all of it, you just have to go back in there and just scrape it a little bit, and it'll all come apart. 
if you want any of the recipes that I talk about, so like the spaghetti squash, lasagna bowls, or anything like that, it, they were really, really good. So just let me know, you know, we can, and we can definitely send them over to you or you'll see the, all the videos and stuff up on our YouTube site. So we're always happy to share. It's all about uh, community and sharing. Okay, so like I said, if you wanted to use the bowl, you could, because it's got a nice little vessel. So you could just put it together like that. We aren't going to use the bulk of this, but everything else, you know, the rest of the spaghetti squash it out. And if you leave a little bit of the spaghetti squash off the side, if you have some like jarred marinara, like one of your favorites, or you make your own, a um, little bit of marinara on top of a spaghetti squash just to eat as a side dish or even for dinner, it's really good. Because you could just take some of your uh, marinara, put in a bunch of the vegetables, and put it on top of spaghetti squash. It's wonderful. Just kind of fork back and forth, scrape the edges. That. And then you got these, like I said, cute little shells. If you want to use them. If not, they go in the trash or compost or whatever else you have. All right, so I just check the spaghetti squash. Like I said, so if you get where it's just like a little bit of clumps, just take your fingers through it or take a, like your fork. That way you just got this beautiful spaghetti squash that just is really good for your dishes. Looks pretty good. Get that fork there. Let me wash my hands real quick. Yep. So, just that little spaghetti squash. I mean, it's not. It's not. We're not talking that big. That big made all that spaghetti squash. There's a huge bowl of it. So definitely don't go overboard. I mean, if you look at the spaghetti squash and they're this size, this is more than enough for two, three, four meals of spaghetti squash, which is really nice. Questions? All right. Yeah, let me just uh, ask questions. Yeah, so if you guys want, please ask questions, questions as we go. Even if it doesn't pertain to the recipe that we're cooking, I'm always happy to answer. I think I saw a seed, I did. Yeah, so sometimes you'll have the little seeds. I did have somebody ask me one time, could you, can you actually bake up the seeds? I have not tried it before, like the pumpkin seeds and those type of thing, but somebody, I can't remember who was on the class said that they were gonna try it and see if the spaghetti squash would actually turn out. The seeds would, I'm like, sounds good to me. All right, all right, so we have the, the milk in here. A little bit more because it's kind of been bubbling just a little bit. So, like I said, unsweet organic soy is what I'm using. That way. All right. So, follow along. So we want to. So we got to heat the non-dairy milk in a millet, uh, medium size a millet, medium size skillet. Um, over medium heat until it becomes so full boil. So we're going to turn it up because we're watching it now versus the salad. We'll get that going and then we're going to add garlic. Just your regular minced garlic. And, and garlic, you know, you can buy the garlic that you want, you know, just and then mix it up as you want, or you can use the ones that's already like a minced garlic that's already in water, um, which is really nice and it makes things a lot easier. Or what I do on Sundays, a lot of times, depends on you know at the time. I over have like ten of the bulbs of the garlic, and I will just put them in the oven, three fifty, just right, you know, just right in the oven, and let them I'll let them actually roast in there for probably about close to an hour, and you'll start seeing it where it starts getting a little bit brown, and then I'll pull them out, and then I will um, take all the the um, what am I trying to say the the wrapping around it and everything else, and then I will put them in these little bunches. So what I do is I will put them on a baking tray and there's usually about six, seven cloves like this together. And I'll put them on a baking tray together like this and then I'll freeze them and then I'll pull them off the baking tray and then I put them in this, this little uh, baggie and I just keep them. So when I'm looking for something with more of like a roasted flavor, like a tomato sauce or something, 
this is wonderful. Or even soups, you just take it out for about two or three minutes before you get ready to use it. And then you can just chop it up and you've got this beautiful roasted garlic. So when garlic goes on sale, this is a great thing to do. This is usually like a baggie, I think is about, probably about six or seven volts. And it peels down to that. Just keep it in the freezer, just long, I put that in there along with my like extra basil and, and um, kale and spinach and everything else. And then I make all, if I get a whole bunch, then I'll make lasagna or something else with it or soups, tomato sauces. Okay, it's coming to a boil. And you're gonna want, when you've got the non-dairy milk into a skillet like this, you're gonna wanna make sure you're watching it and not walking away and like doing laundry or something like what I do a lot um, because, you're, because your milk will scald really quick. Nothing worse, burns to the bottom of the pan and it takes almost like a, a Brillo pad or something like that to get it off or a lot of soaking. Okay, boiling. So now I've got my garlic, so I'm gonna put the garlic in there. So when we talked about it, it was two cloves of garlic. Get that going, because you're gonna to wanna to get the nice flavors going. And it's doing a really nice kind of like a, a small boil at the bottom, which is really, really what you're looking for. Because if you turn it too high, it's gonna scald really quick. All right, so we're just doing that, just kind of giving it, getting it nice and fragrant as it says. So you'll start smelling it. You'll get that really nice smell of the, of the garlic. I said, this is, a, this is what's really nice about this. Other than getting the spaghetti squash ready, it's a one pot meal, which I love. Makes things so easy. All right. We're gonna add the spaghetti squash here in just a minute. And if you want more sauce, then just add, you know, add more of your favorite non-dairy milk, add more of your ingredients, like double. So instead of doing three quarters of a cup, do, you know, like one and a half cups. Um, you know, it depends on if you like things really saucy, do you like things that just cover the, the you know, the whatever ingredients you're putting on, like pasta or spaghetti squash, it's up to you. The other thing that you can do with this recipe is once you get it ready, you can put it into a, if you've got like an iron skillet, um, some of us have iron skillets, like from mom or something like that, you can put it in an iron skillet, put a little bit of pink or breadcrumbs on the top and then put it under um, the broiler for a little bit and have it all nice and toasty and kind of crunchy would be really good. Okay, there we go. So it just looks, you know, it's just, it's all it is, it's just milk. Get your non-dairy milk and your, and your uh, garlic in there, but it smells really good. Okay, so we're gonna have the spaghetti squash. I saw a piece of it. Don't want the peeling in there. So just kind of take it and then you know pour the put the milk. So grab a little bit of spaghetti squash, just kind of turn it. Get it nice and covered without breaking down your spaghetti squash. If you're just kind of doing a nice little flip, then it gets everything nice and covered and does it, and then you don't have all these little tiny pieces of spaghetti squash. Like the same thing you do with pasta. Okay, so get that going. All right, so we got in there, got that going. So then we're gonna add the spinach. Remove my keyboard. So just regular spinach. And you can chop it up if you want smaller pieces. Spinach really wilts down really fast. And so it's it's nice to have the bigger pieces because then it wilts down and you've got really nice, nice pieces in there. So same thing, just kind of grab your spaghetti squash, just put it over the spinach and then it'll start wilting down really quick. Doesn't take very long at all. If you wanted, you know, didn't have spinach, but you had like kale or something like that, you could actually, you could actually switch that out and not use the spinach. We always seem to have kale and spinach on hand all the time. Always, always lots of greens. Okay, 
Let that sit there for a minute or two. So it's looking, starting to wilt down already. It smells really good. A little taste. Good garlic. Okay, then we've got that in there. So we're letting that, for letting that kind of simmer for a little bit. Then we've got sun-dried tomatoes. So I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna do a quick chop on the sun-dried tomatoes because once they actually rehydrate, they tend to, you get a lot bigger pieces than what you normally do. So I'm just gonna do just a quick chop. So that way, instead of having big pieces like that, then you have little pieces like that. Add in the sun-dried tomatoes. And what beautiful colors. Mix those in a little bit and I'll show you. It smells good, the smokiness. So some dried tomatoes are in there. Pretty. All right. And then we've got artichoke hearts. So we just did the regular jarred or canned artichoke hearts. You want to make sure they're in water. So what I did is the artichoke hearts are usually about this long and about this wide. So I just sliced them down the middle and then I just kind of just did a rough chop on them. So that way, if you want, but if you want really big pieces of artichoke hearts, leave them whole. But I like them chopped because then it kind of matches everything else. So artichoke parts in. Mix those in. Hey, Georgie, one of our other little doggies is hanging out. She must smell dinner. All right. Um, like I said, if you ever, you know, if you if the things start getting a little bit dry. I will actually keep this, the sun-dried tomato um, with water, so the flavoring, and then just use it. I'll probably put it in, I have a one of the little um, cartons and stuff of the, the um, vegetable broth. I'm actually gonna add that in there. So I'll just have that flavor for everything else, no waste. I always like to have the, the sun-dried tomato water is really good, mixes up into anything. All right, so we've got everything in there. So we've got dried parsley. If you have fresh parsley, of course, use that. Add that in there and the black pepper. And I'm going to do a little taste real quick to see if there's anything that we need to add. It's really good, especially with the smoky um, sun-dried tomatoes. It's one of my favorites. So that's what it looks like. Let me grab the spoon out there. Before I put it into a bowl. One pot meal. Could be two or three meals, which is yummy. All right, so that kind of keep warm. Get the salad ready. Dried tomato juice. All right, so we've got the salad. We have the dressing. So I'm going to actually put on gloves. And the reason why, if I was, you know, if this was home and, and there was no camera on me, hands, Jerry's used to my hands. But when I do it, when I do it for uh, cooking classes and stuff, I always put the gloves on, just making it a little bit easier. And it's also easier to clean up too. So I can just rip the gloves off and I have things all over my hands. And when you've got a kale salad, there's three things, there's usually two or three things and stuff that will break down kale. So of course, some type of an acid. So if you've got um, like balsamic vinegars, that type of thing, that breaks down kale really well. So it gets the chewiness out of the kale. Avocado is another thing that, so if you just do a lot of avocado and a little bit of pepper, and maybe just even if you want a little bit of salt, that mix, that actually breaks down your kale really fast too. And then the other thing is, is citrus. So like, um, 
like strawberries and blueberries and things. If you get the, the like some of the strawberries in there and really mix them up and then you add, or peaches or something like that. And then you add in um, like the blueberries on top, it breaks down your kale really well too. So like lime juice, lemon juice, you know, any of those type of things. So I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna pour a little bit of the dressing on and I'm not gonna pour all the dressing on because I'm gonna mix it up. And when I'm massaging it in, I'm breaking down the kale. So I'm kind of like making sure the dressing's really getting into the kale. So it breaks it down and doesn't make it as chewy. And you'll notice that when you do, like if you've got like four cups, by the time you end up massaging in, you get the dressing all over every, the, the kale and everything else, it goes down to about three, sometimes almost like two and a half cups. It breaks down really quick. So I know a lot of people say, oh, I don't like kale, it's too hard to chew. And it's like, and a lot of times you'll get like, isn't that the stuff that used to be around all the salad bars back in the old days? And it's like, yes. But if you make it up into salads and you get, you know, you love, then you'll eventually get to where you love kale. It's so good for you. And I'm not doing like a hard squeeze because I have the tomatoes in there. If you decided to, to do the kale um, and you really wanted to break it down, I would do it without, like you have the red cabbage in, I would keep the, the tomatoes um, and the garbanzo beans out and then really get in there with your hands. And then that was, and then add those in last. And by massaging in the dressing, what I'm doing here, also into the kale or any type of salad that you're doing, also keeps the dressing, especially since this one doesn't have a thickener in it, it keeps it from kind of like pooling on the bottom, so I'll show you. So if I look at the, if I get the salad right now, normally what you would see is a whole bunch of the balsamic vinegar pooling on the bottom, but because I'm massaging it in and getting it all through the lettuce and everything, it, it doesn't pool at the bottom. And the nice thing about massaging it in too, all your garbanzo beans go to the bottom so you can grab it with your hands and then pull it back up. And then the way to take, say if you've got enough dressing, the way to try it is grab a piece of lettuce and taste it. If you want a little bit more of the, the dressing, just add a little bit more. And the other thing is, is if when massaging it in, you use less dressing too, even though that's the good part. All right, do a quick little mix. And all the garbanzo beans and the tomatoes have all fallen to the bottom. Get off the gloves, grab my bowl. Looks like I have runaway kale and Everything else. This was Jerry and I at home. We'd be eating this just right out of this bowl. But for you guys, I bring out the pretty bowl. You can see it. We will probably eat almost over half of this tonight, and then Jerry will hope that there's leftovers yep. and eat the rest tomorrow for lunch. Yep. And so you'll notice when I'm when I'm scraping, there's not there's hardly any dressing at all because it's all in the kale. Grab some, uh, grab some of the pretty stuff. All right, so there is the absolutely beautiful Tuscan kale salad. Isn't that pretty? I mean, it's just one of those ones that you could just, you know, triply. Let's forget the, uh, the creamy spaghetti squash. The Tuscan uh, spaghetti squash and just put a fork in this and eat it. It looks so good and so refreshing. Yum. Love things like this. Anything that's, you know, especially, I always call that like eye candy because it's all the beautiful colors and you got the purples and the reds. And, you know, and if you had like pieces of jicama or you got your garbanzo beans, it's just, it's so pretty. Yummy.
And when you're mixing it up, and if you wanted more, if you wanted actually more sauce, um, then I'm gonna do a little bit more sauce. You can just mix in a little bit more of the, the soy milk. So just turn up your heat. I'm gonna do just a little bit more. Apply a little bit more garlic. I want it just a little more saucy or sassy, one or the other, just a little bit. It smells so good. What does so it taste good. like? It's like the sun-dried tomatoes and smokiness and, you know, okay, grab an artichoke part. It's really nice. It has, you've got the smokiness flavor, which is, but you wouldn't have that if you just had the regular sun dried tomatoes. And then it has, you know, the nice, nice kind of the creamy sauce on there. It has your spinach and the artichokes. So, artichokes, you get a little bit of the kind of like a, like a little bit of acid with that stuff, but it's just really good. Like nice, mellow flavors, but good. Just making sure it's heated up. All right, so we're good. And then I'll unplug it so you don't listen to it. I am going to do a rough chop of some chives to put on top. Had some chives left over from a couple. Oh, we used it for the uh, Iron Chef. This is what we did. We put that on top of the, the potatoes. So get some chives left over. Never grow chives in your backyard. <laughs> one, one of the warnings I'll do, they're absolutely beautiful and they've got these beautiful purple flowers, but once the flower, um, the flower blooms, it dries and then it, the wind hits it and it goes, it's like dandelions, it goes all over the place. So if you ever plant chives, always plant them in a pot and keep them somewhere away from your, your yard and that type of thing. And then, um, you know, make sure that, you know, kind of take the, the little flowers off and stuff and then use the chives because otherwise you will have, chives will pop up all over your yard, everywhere. A lot. It's just going to do it for decoration. All right. Let's grab a spoon. I find some of the some of the sun-dried tomatoes and the color. Make sure that's all showing for you guys. Get some greenery. Add some chives. If you don't have chives, parsley, basil, fresh basil. If you have fresh, fresh basil. So, creamy Tuscan spaghetti squash. It's got artichokes, sun dried tomatoes, spinach, all the good things. You could actually put other vegetables. So, you could put in like um, zucchini. You could put in, you know, Jerry would probably, it's not really Tuscan, but he would love probably bok choy, a little sauteed, sauteed bok choy. Um, you could actually, you know, take out the spinach and put in kale. So, make it really Tuscan. And then you have hand underneath there, this absolutely lovely Tuscan kale salad. So that is dinner for us tonight. <laughs> Jerry's like, yay, whole nice bowl of uh, a spaghetti squash. So like all kinds of vegetables, which is absolutely wonderful. So I hope you guys enjoy. Like I said, if you want any recipes, looking for switching something out, one of your favorites and want to know how to make it um, like plant-based type of things or ingredients, substitutions, always ask. Send me emails. My email's on there. So it's Kelly at Plant Based Kitchen. So K E L L E Y at Plant Based Kitchen.com. Happy to answer, happy to share any of our recipes. So hope you guys enjoy tonight. Um, looks beautiful and delicious. Thank you. I appreciate it. So do try it. Please let me know. I love hearing from when you try recipes and you get the thumbs up to, 
to make it again. So thank you for sharing that. Really appreciate it. All right. Well, we'll see you next time. So thank you. Talk guys. to you later. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. That does look good. I, I will have to try that one. <laughs> Want to hear when you do it. Yeah. Thanks. Bye bye. Um, see ya. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Bye too. bye. Yummy. <laughs>